today okay well my collection today is called modern air collection it's a little bit of modern mixed with some um, apocalyptic Mad Max type of stuff one of my favorite themes that I like to go back and forth with uh, but it's definitely modern so I wanted to call it modern air okay it's nice and modern <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so. All right. Why do you choose leather? Do you, are you like a Harley Davidson fan or why leather in specific? Well, actually, when I first started, I made, so I used to wear leather all the time. I used to wear motorcycle jackets. I used to do all of that all the time. And, uh, but I used to buy like, people's because I was in the music industry. And uh, one day I said, you know, I want to make my own leather. So I went and found a really big manufacturer and I made two jackets. It was just leather because I like leather. And, uh, a New York Fashion Week contacted me and said, hey, you know, we love what you just posted. You want to do, you know, New York Fashion Week? And I said, thanks, but I'm not a fashion designer. And they said, well, how long can you make 15? I said, hmm, humor me. <laughs> they said, two months. And I said, I'll do it. And then that's where the King of Leather came from. On my very first show, I did this show, Deer in the Headlights. Thought it was going to be a one-off because I'm not a fashion designer at the time. And uh, Huffington Post, one of the biggest... Uh, news agencies out there in the United States here said, you know, they wrote an article on one designer and it was me and they called me the king of leather mm. and it just took off. Wow, so sometimes you just gotta like, yeah. okay, hop on the opportunity, yeah, yeah. Right? right? So then I said, well, I guess I'm doing leather. So that's how the leather thing came. And I can see you have a lot of beautiful, successful designs. So as a successful designer yourself, what would you say makes a successful design? Uh, well, first it starts with the idea. Okay. Right, and be creative with it, and um, you never know what people are gonna like. Right, you just don't. Like fashion is one of those things. Like when you go to the store and mm -hmm. you see hundreds of clothes lined up, right? But right. people pass by most of them, right? And they mm -hmm. go to what they like. Everybody has their thing that they like, and mm -hmm. stores don't really. We don't really know what you like, right. so we're guessing a lot of times. Okay. So I just say, just I always just go with how I feel. Exactly. And create what I what I like and what I think people like. And it'll mesh. And then it'll mesh. And if they may not like this, they may like this, and that's right. and that's how you you capture. Mm -hmm. you know, so you put yourself in their shoes, basically, like okay, yeah, maybe yeah. they like this. I like yes, that. I do. Yeah, for yes. sure. So yes. what would you say um, we can look forward to for future events, future designs? Do you have anything up and coming that we can all catch? and tune into? Well, I mean, I do shows all around the world. Okay. Okay, so I just did my Paris Fashion Week show. I mm -hmm. uh, think I had the second biggest show in all of fashion, uh, Paris is what everyone says, about 800 people. Um, I have a store in Dubai, and maybe we'll get to that, but I have a really big store in Dubai. So we're trying to expand and open a store in Paris and, and Milan and London. So that's what's on the horizon. Okay. Uh, but Definitely I still always tell us about Dubai. I really yeah. want that. Yeah, well, um, I opened up a store in the biggest mall in the world in the most expensive section. Okay. It's called Fashion Avenue. So my neighbors are Louis Vuitton, it's, it's uh, Saint Laurent, it's Chanel, it's Bentiago, they're all right there. And uh, really it's like a little bragging point. There's 1,840 stores in there. And there's only two black stores in the whole mall. Black designer be. stores, yeah. Black owned business. Yeah. And, and one is He's deceased, Virgil Abloh. So I'm really the only one. Okay. So, it, it is one so of those yeah, being yeah. that accomplished, what advice would you give for other designers who want to be in shoes like yours? Well, it's not an easy industry. Probably 99.9% right. .9 fail. If you notice, most of the most of the news coverage is always about Louis Vuitton, the Saint Laurent, and it's really hard for small brands and medium brands to break ahead. I got lucky okay. that they talk about me within those rounds because I've been on the cover of almost every well, magazine. Well, your hard work paid off. Yes, for true, but it's not, that doesn't happen for most. Right. So all I have to say to people is don't get discouraged because it happened to me out of the blue or it can happen to you. But, you know, the odds may not be in your favor, but you have to just keep going. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it because everyone's going to be, oh, you can't do it. I'll get a regular job. But if you're passionate about it, it could happen just like me. Right. I made two jackets and wasn't even trying to be in a fashion show and next thing I know <laughs> everything just you know, blew up. Like, well, I'm still, you know, a year in, like, what's going on? You know? Sometimes so. it's just like one extra step, maybe. Yeah, like, one extra just, step. If you just said no that day, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. 
Right. If I would have said thanks, but no, really, I'm not doing it. I would be doing something else. Right. What's yeah. your vision now that you're like you're in so many countries? Where where do you see your brand going to? Well, lately, all the articles have been calling me the next Gucci. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes, yeah, I saw the Gucci. But, but it's coming out of nowhere, and everyone's like, Michael Lombard, the next Gucci, mm -hmm. and the big magazine is writing about it. So I'm flattered that they're seeing me as the next Gucci. Or I don't know, maybe I shouldn't. We be. love I don't Gucci. Know. Yeah, okay, yeah, I was going to say. But, <laughs> you know, but I'm just, just striving to be me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the next anything, but it's a great comparison to have. Yes. Right. So I'm just so, I guess in a way, I'm striving to be the next Gucci. Right. Big shoes to fill. But, but, yeah, but in my own lane, in my yeah. own way. Well, right. no yeah. one's ever done you before, so yeah. you yes. can only be the best at That's it. True. We know That's who true. Gucci's target audience is. Yeah. Who is. Who is your customer? Like, who is Michael Lombard's end customer? My customer obviously has to be a little high end, but they, they have style and they have swagger. And they're, they're gonna be like middle-aged and younger a lot of it and um, they just they just have a zest for life they want to they just want to buy something really cool and say hey look at me when I'm at this party or this or this event you know that that's my customer mm -hmm. and I have a lot of them out there so it's pretty good beautiful nice. yeah. thank you so much for joining us thank in this you. interview thank do you. you have anything you'd like to add before we wrap up you know my great model <laughs> over here rocking all of all of our beautiful yes. stuff. Loving it. So thank you for joining us today and this was for the production of the Fashion, Fashion Business, Business Channel. Channel.